The question we attempted to answer in our project is, can the wording of a question create response bias? Our topic was legal cigarette smoking age. We wanted to see the difference in response between one question that was posed in two different ways. Our questions were, one, the CDC reports that annually cigarette smoking accounts for one in five deaths in the U.S. What do you think the legal cigarette smoking age should be? Two, many people smoke cigarettes recreationally. What do you think the legal cigarette smoking age should be? By referencing the amount of yearly deaths due to cigarette smoking, our first question attempts to obtain a higher average age in its responses. By casually referring to cigarette smoking as a recreational activity, our second question aims to create a lower average age in its responses. We predict that the average legal smoking age will be higher among people who answer the first question compared to those who answer the second question. Therefore, we believe that the wording of a question can create response bias. We collected our data by standing on a busy street corner in downtown Evanston and randomly asking people passing by if they would be willing to answer a question for our statistics class. The first 25 people to say yes to this question were asked our first question. The next 25 people to say yes to this question were asked the second question. Our interviewer was the same for both sets of 25 people and we did this survey all in one day at around the same time. For the first question, the CDC reports that annually cigarette smoking accounts for 1 in 5 deaths in the U.S. What do you think the legal cigarette smoking age should be? It's clear that the mode of the data set is 21 years old. For the second question, many people smoke cigarettes recreationally. What do you think the legal smoking age should be? The data, data of the set is 18. In addition, the mean of the first question's response was 20.08 years old whereas the mean of the second question's response was 18.24 years old. Clearly, the first, more serious question elicited a higher average age in its responses, while the second, more casual question led to a lower overall age in its responses. The spread between the two responses was also noticeably different. However, if we took up out the zero years, years old outlier on the second question, the spread would be almost identical. This implies that people have set views on what they think the legal smoking age should be, but it is possible that the way we posted the question made people more comfortable responding with lower or higher ages than the current legal cigarette smoking age. We also noticed that between both questions, 18 and 21 were by far the most common answers. This is because both of those ages are often used to determine one's ability to make mature decisions for a legal standpoint. For example, the legal drinking age is 21, and the legal voting age is 18 years old. Although most people have set views on what the cigarette smoking age should be, we found that the way our question was posed determined how comfortable people were with saying lower or higher ages without being anonymous. This explains why the first question's responses had a higher average age than the second question's responses. Since we did our project on the same day at the same time with the same interviewer for every question we, person we questioned, we did not have any major sources of error that we could identify, but non-response bias could have influenced our data. Among the first 30 people we asked, five chose not to respond. Some people we approached chose not to give us an age because they believed no one should smoke. Since our survey was based on numbers, we had no way to account for those responses, which could have brought the average age up significantly. Some chose not to respond solely because they were busy or in a hurry, and we have no way of knowing how their potential responses could have altered our data. One source of undercoverage in our data collection was that all of our responders were over 20 years old. The views of younger people are more easily influenced by something like wording of a question. Therefore, the fact that we didn't account for them may have caused our two data averages to be closer to each other. Because we surveyed on the day of the Northwestern football game, responses such as 0 and 16 years old may be attributed to the college students who may not have taken our survey as seriously as others would have. One way we could improve our survey would be to determine a numerical representation for people who responded that they don't believe anyone should smoke, which would lead to more accurate results because we wouldn't be eliminating them from our data completely. Another way we could improve our survey would be to make it anonymous, allowing people to not feel their responses would be judged by the interviewer. Can you